Hey everyone, have you given this speaker's sight a try with the Solar Warlock yet? If not, then you're missing out on probably the best synergetic build available that, quite honestly, will see a huge usage in GMs and raids alike. I know prismatic builds are all the rage at the moment, but Solar Warlock still has that charm with it being an absolute powerhouse with the right kit. The new speaker's sight and the red death combo not only carries on that legacy of power, but the ample support coming from you is nothing to be shy of. I don't usually like to brag, but this build really is amazing to use, so let me break this down for you to have a better understanding. The concept of the build is pretty simple, to support a team through various means possible. This may mean buffing them with additional ability energy, or just outright healing them. As this build is very simple to do, you only really need two fragments for the build, and then can build the rest however you like. This is kind of why I can see this build being extremely useful for players who want to do more tougher missions available, but need some sort of healing factor added in, just to keep them alive and their teammates alive as possible. Something like this in the raid is a great way to keep new lights alive while guiding them through the content slowly. For the exotics, we will be using the Speaker's Sight and Red Death Reformed to achieve our goals. The Speaker's Sight exotic trait, the Lost Voice, states, Healing grenades spawn a resortive turret. Healing allies occasionally spawn an orb of power. Similar to the boots of the assembler, the following is more straightforward and direct with its usage, as it will do the heavy work for you. With the right setup in mind, you can keep your grenade energy always topped up, which means you can spam the grenade turret as many times as you like, and also cover as many angles as you can, which is something I followed through with the following build. Red Death is a now brought back D1 weapon with new perks. Its exalted trait, Redemption, states Final Blows with Weapon cures you and increases reload speed. Reloading after Final Blow cures nearby allies. Just like the old trait, the weapon will cure you per kill made, but can also cure your teammates as well after a kill, and then reload. Since the cure buff will be a common trait within the build, there are many ways for us to link this and the build back directly into our fragments, which will then link back to our abilities and so forth. Basically, the more we have cure available and active, the more we can abuse Ember Benelevance effect for however long we like, and you'll see why. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. Touch of Flames, where healing grenades improve the strength of cure and restoration effects applied. Helion, where activating your class ability, will summon a solar mortar that lobs solar projectiles at distant targets. Targets damaged by the projectile are scorched. Ember of Ashes, where you apply more scorched stats to targets. Ember of Serum, where defeating scorched targets grants media energy and creates fire sprite. Ember of Sindering, where your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. And Ember of Benelevance, where applying restoration, cure, or radiant to allies grants increased grenade, melee and class ability regeneration for a short time. As a requirement, you must have healing grenades and phoenix dive, as these will allow you to trigger Ember and Eleven's effect as often as you like. With this one fragment full effect, as long as you trigger one of the three requirements for it, it will allow you to spam your class ability, grenades and melee as often as you like, which can be kind of hilarious when you include the new super within the build as well. Always having Ember of Ashes and searing for these solar builds makes it easier for us to navigate and cover key abilities we'll highly use. While Sindering and Benelevance always allows us to keep our two main support abilities alive no matter how bad the situation is. You can of course edit the build how you like, and if you want to focus more on a damage or mixed match set, it's bound to you. But you must always have Benelevance available for the upkeep alone. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority. Recovery is also marked as high priority, but in our case, we'll get most of its support via our fragments, Ember Sindering, and Benelevance. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. Ideally recommended if you're attempting to use this build in any high level content, the following damage reduction should be strong enough to survive certain one shot hits in game. But even if that's not the case, your healing aspects should be strong enough to further buff you out. A discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 46 second cooldown via healing grenades. We don't tend to use healing grenades as often, unless it's for more solo challenging content. However, the new exotic requires this to be added within the build, so we must abide from there. As the cooldown is quite fast ready, you won't need much mods to support it, such as grenade kickstart. 
Additionally, with the fragments available, you have more freedom to add in other mods that won't hamper the overall build. Having impact induction for a 12% gain and distribution for a 4% gain is suitable enough for this sort of build. Additional mods which are highly recommended, we have the following. Charged up times 1 is going to give you that extra plus 1 of armor charge once active. Next, having the harmonic siphon and powerful attraction mods for producing orbs of power via solo weapon kills will help big time while also making it easier for us to collect them. Adding a solar surge mod for a 10% solar buff will make it easier to net kills. And lastly, having heavy ammo finder, reserves, and scavenger mods for both solar and strand will make it easier for us to maintain weapon usage for long. So as we have covered our main primary choice, I'm going to cover the two remaining weapons I have went with. Having the cool with raw ball and slice is quite honestly a must for any builds of allowing class ability a lot. Having a 20% damage buff against bosses and being able to sever on target, all I want is the complete gold mine of a weapon to hold on to. Quite honestly, this pairs really well with the synergy of the build going, as activating Phoenix Dive is quite easy and fast to achieve, while at the same time giving us a damage boost and healing factor all in one. I recommend you farm and keep this role shown, as it can play a huge part in the number of builds you make along the way. Having Apex Predator with raw pawn reconstruction will also be useful for boss encounters and dealing with mini bosses as well. Although overused, it's still a great weapon to use for its sheer firepower and damage potential in DPS phases. You can use whatever you like here, but a solo rocket is more ideal considering the many buffs we have going for it. So to give the build a proper try in endgame content as close as possible, I tried this in the new Bridge Arena activity on expert mode while being only in 1994 light, and although I did get torn up by certain enemies to have a habit of one-shotting you nonetheless, it actually did fairly well keeping teammates alive as long as you stayed near them. The healing turret has a unique trait of tracking the shots to nearby teammates depending on where you use it, so if one of your teammates decide to go on a wander and need some additional support, one grenade chuck to their side should be enough to sustain them until you then get to them. Even with the grenade now not available, we then have the Phoenix Dive and Red Death Effect also kicking in, so we can keep that constant heat and pressure up as long as we A. Stay near our teammates and B. Activate Ember of Benevolence as mentioned before. We can even in some cases bring our teammates back from near death situation just from a reload or two alone, which may sound risky to do, but is very helpful for supporting certain teammates that love to go solo and not sticking together as a team. Honestly, there isn't much you need to know about the build, as it will constantly keep you and your team alive while also granting you an ability energy for doing a good job. The only downside to the build is that it will not make you mortal, like most content creators like to say, as certain enemy types or groups can kill you before you even get a chance to fully heal yourself or your team. Sometimes, even if you do get the heals in, it's still not enough to save those that play risky for a living, so keep in mind where and when you use your abilities. Overall, it's a pretty simple, but highly fun and actually pretty flexible build that I can see being super useful for later endgame content. Once GM Excisions comes, I will not be surprised to see this as a of combo come to fruit. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below like always. And I recommend you give my other playlist a view for more past builds I've done. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.